Um, then moving on from me into the next logical step of software. Um, basically, um, basically in the 90s and, and onwards into today, cheap computer technology um, has allowed music to be performed completely differently to traditional music performance um, versus having to have like a, a band or a drummer and, and, and all this sort of stuff behind you. You can um, basically run everything off a laptop or electronic, or it's sort of becoming known by some people who do live coding via a laptop where the, um, people will actually um, on the fly um, programming different synth sounds and depending on what software they're using uh, as part of the actual performance itself. Um, I suppose two of the most sort of popular virtual studio environments that emerged with producing live electronic or performances on um, Propel Head, I think, called Reason, which is like a virtual rack of gear, um, which again is usually controlled by many controllers, so it has a whole lot of um, effects and um, virtual uh, and the other uh, synths and drum machine built into that. And the other thing is Apple and Live, which is what I'll use and I'll sort of get stuck into fairly shortly. Um, and there's all other things as well. Um, music can also be produced by other software since and effect modules um, and other virtual hardware devices, um, popular software tools like um, uh, Reactor, which is where you can actually produce your own, build your own sample and set up the way you want, um, your own effects units, your own mixer in a sense. And, um, if you're really into setting up things the custom way that you want it to do um, and you have the time to look at React, there's also other freeware sort of programming um, type options as well. Um, sort of have a line called Super Collider and Chuck if you're really into into hardcore coding and developing your own thing for free. Um, yeah, so because there are things looking back on live, there are certain ways where I've had to sort of like around it and be able to just make some basic things work the way I wanted to as well. Um, so there's with Reactor, you can actually get into sort of build your own development from, from scratch and have it how you want it to work for performance. Um, and then moving on, I'm talking about that MIDI computers as MIDI controllers. Um, MIDI controller itself is basically uh, allows you to control settings in, in, a, um, in the software or a virtual synth, which is maybe part of the software, and if you uh, such as mixing, um, controlling effects unit, synthesizers, as I sort of mentioned before, with playing sample towns, um, keyboards, obviously. It's one element here. Well, I have a thing called um, the it's an M Audio Axiom 49, which is a 49 key MIDI controller. Um, it, it's quite nice one because it's semi weighted, so it has almost the feel of a real piano. Uh, versus the one on the screen, it's just a little cheeky thing, which well, this might, might have quite the same feel as a real piano. Um, and but the same thing with one on the screen and the um, Axiom 49 happening on the desk in front of me. It does have bolts on it, which you can then program. Um, to control whatever you want with the without the mind, if you can set them to control um, pans or sense or effects units, or even um, say an EQ control on, on a channel. I've got drum pads as well, where you can trigger off a drum machine or turn channels on and off. And there's a whole range of things you can do with, with MIDI controllers, and, and it all depends on how the software picks it up, which is which is quite cool. And even mixing controls, I have a set of faders on this control here where I can mix things live, which is, is quite flexible. In the sense that it gets you away from staring at the computer screen as well. A lot of it, um, electronic music can sort of look like you're checking your email, and it can be at least you're sort of you're not staring at the screen for two hours on the stage. Can be sort of look a bit boring for people who can see you twiddling it on in real time. Um, I also use a flip controller as well as I mentioned before, which is actually um, it's actually a drum controller, which I won't leave it stuck on the floor um, because I used to use this wonderful thing, which um, used to work for me, it's a MIDI foot control which I bought on eBay for about 30 bucks. Um, but it mysteriously stopped working one day. It's basically allows me to change channels. Um, um, and I use that basically to queue, um, queue up um, uh, next what's known as a scene with an Apple Live, which I'll talk a bit about later. Um, so I can then flick between like a verse part of a, a track, for example, or a chorus part. But if it stopped working um, and you press the buttons and nothing happens, I took it to be fixed and, and they said it works perfectly, but it doesn't. So. Um, I still got to get another proper foot controller. So I'm using a, um, a drum machine, and I use the um, foot pedals of the drum machine to do the same job as a foot control. So I've got a huge thing under the desk here, and I need to use like a little tiny foot pedal on it. So it's, it's a bit of a pain, but um, I have to buy another foot controller. It's on my to-do list. Um, and obviously, they've got drum pads themselves. If I wanted to, I could set the um, drum controller up and then play like a drum solo through the MIDI pads. Um, but some are better than others. Like, you might have seen a lot of those. Um, uh, electronic drum kits that they sell now in music stores are basically a lot of my MIDI controllers and if you can rack it through a sampler um, you can basically emulate a whole different range from electronic to natural drum sounds 
Um, it's good for drivers, obviously, because then they can just practice at home with headphones on without annoying the neighbours, and obviously use that for live performance as well. Um, so from video controllers, I'll jump onto um, another part of the hardware. Um, sound cards. Um, the sound card is obviously a computer expansion card, the input and output of audio signals. A lot of, obviously, computers come with built-in sound cards, but the, one of the issues with a lot of built-in sound cards is the quality isn't necessarily always the best audio quality. Sometimes you can get um, hardware noise from sound cards as well, it might not, not be the cleanest signal. Um, and, and other things like having a separate uh, USB or Firewire sound card, um, they lay a high quality um, sound, high quality um, digital sort of analog conversion, so the sound quality is a lot cleaner. Um, you can have multiple channels, um, audio and things like built in mic preamps. What I use on the desk here is an M Audio uh, Fast Track Ultra, um, which I bought for about I think it was about 500 bucks. Um, it has um, the good thing why I sort of bought it because it has multiple inputs on it, plus it has four mic inputs on it. So if I want to go and um, record a band or something, at least I have four mics and I can use it to record rehearsals with, with one of the bands. I mean, and, and the sound came out quite well, so you just do this and a laptop and a couple of mics and, and you're away recording. Um, which sort of, if I used to, um, prior to getting the audio thing, I used to use. Um, This, this mixer here, um, and this cheap ass little sound card here. Um, <laughs> and I had to upgrade. And the sound quality is a lot better out of that than, like, this is just a cheap little bearing mixer, and, and you don't realize how noisy it is until I bought something with some decent quality preamps in it. So the good thing about it, it sort of, it sort of eliminates some gear and minimizes the amount of stuff you have to worry about having extra cables and things failing on you. It um, just makes life a little easier if it's just one little box. Um, so yeah, recommend getting a good sound card for, for the live performance. This also has MIDI input on it. Um, if you wanted to plug, if I wanted to plug my um, controller through that, I could as well. Um, so this, this lots, gives you lots of options for connecting things and disconnecting things. It has multiple outputs too, which, which might be handy if you want to do surround sound or anything crazy like that. You've got headphone monitoring on it, so you can check um, um, sort of what, what your mixes are sounding like for, you know, like I'm going to get here to do like tonight or a gig old. Check it on one where working through the headphones via the sound card as well, um, which is a handy little thing to do. And, and for DJing as well, having multiple outputs through output and live, you can set it up to um, say crossfade between two samples or two tracks. Um, and you can even then set this up in a way so you can um, uh, monitor separately to what's actually going out in front of house and make sure you're killing up your, your tracks correctly, which is yeah. a handy thing. Um, uh, in terms of a, uh, an output, you need uh, a pair. Uh, uh, two pairs of stereo apps, so four outputs to, to um, DJ sort of in the sense where you can check yeah. um, sort of cross cross phase. So have one one will be going out to say that the PA system, and one that will go to your headphones. Head, yeah, so that headphone mix in a sense. Yeah, I don't haven't really done it much. But I do only DJ once, and I back then I didn't have this sound so, so I just you sort need of four in four out. Um, no, you don't really need four in. You mainly use the outputs on it, so you have an option where you have one mix. That you can monitor one that's sort of going out to a separate, separate channel, but I'm not a huge expert on it, so I might be slightly wrong. <laughs> I'm not much of a DJ, but um, I believe that, that that's the case, yeah.